Mm. Um, so we talk about uh, last time we talked about uh, the turning in the uh, the, <clears throat> uh, the four immeasurables turning in the four immeasurables in order to uh, as a prerequisite uh, in order to train in the uh, for the bodhicitta. Uh, so uh, we will uh, we will take a closer look with this now. So last week uh, we talked about the four Im four immeasurables uh, and uh, the four 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 immeasurables. We talked about that, uh, and that was the immeasurable love, compassion, uh, joy, uh, and uh, the uh, equanimity. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, so uh, we will try to uh, sort of uh, train on this, right? We will we will uh, we will talk about how to do each each of the uh, this. So uh, imagine or visualize, uh, basically you sit wherever you are. So now this is like an actual, you are doing an actual practice. Mm -hmm. uh, so you sit cross-legged, um, um, cross-legged in, in your altar room or in your meditation room, wherever you are, and then uh, sit cross-legged and in front of you, uh, there may be a, a altar or maybe visualize an image of a Buddha and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, imagine uh, in front of you, uh, at the height of your um, forehead, so not not at the same level as yourself, but like your forehead's level, there is a mm -hmm. Buddha sitting there. Now, <clears throat> for example, you are sitting here, and the Buddha is sitting like this, not like this, with equal with you, but the Buddha's, like, uh, the feet and the legs were at the level of your forehead. You know, yeah. your forehead. The distance to uh from you to the Buddha would be around uh five five feet, se five, six feet like that. So depending on yeah. your uh yeah. depending on your height, if you are to do a prostration, your hand will be able to touch the Buddha's feet. So maybe yeah. like five, five feet, six feet, uh, uh, according to your height. Um like that. So the distance between you and the Buddha is about uh, uh five, six feet, and the height is Buddha's height is uh about same as your forehead. So in this, uh, visualize like that, and to uh, to this Buddha, uh, now we, we practice. In front of yeah. this Buddha, we practice. <clears throat> so if you remember, we talk about the three types of individuals, uh, the enemies, uh, the, the friends, the foes, and the stranger. Just remember? Yeah. Uh, so think of those three individuals, the friends, the foes, and uh, the strangers. Mm. Yeah. So think of uh okay. So in your life, you have many enemies. So enemy does not mean someone you want to kill, but something, someone that make that disturbs your peace of mind. Maybe from your colleague, maybe you, for your family member, anybody, right? So anybody who is disturbing you a lot, uh, interrupts your peace of mind, and so so on and so forth. So uh, that is your uh, enemy. Huh? So uh, think of one enemy. So you have many enemies. We all have many enemies. So think of one enemy. Uh, one person who bothers you the most, and uh, he is the or she is the representative of, of all the enemies, all the people that annoys you. So put him or her right in front of you. Yeah. So think like uh, so you are sitting like this, and the Buddha is sitting like that. So in between you and the Buddha, there is your enemy. Okay, enemy, and you are facing each other face to face yeah. like that. Yeah. So that enemy uh, is in front of you, right? And then on your right. Uh, there is the people um, that uh, the, the friends that people you are uh, you are you are in love with you are attached with, uh, and on the yeah. left there are people who you are a uh, stranger to whom you don't know who you don't care indifferent people. Now what we do is um, so the the person in front of you which is your enemy so you have many enemies so uh, she is the, uh, the 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 main the ambassador the president of all your enemies organization or group so he is or she is sitting in the front and he or she is circled by many other uh, your smaller and smaller enemies so all of them are in front of you uh, now you look at them so think of the person uh, who annoys you the most your enemy right and then in so in front of you right in front of you is the enemy but then above the enemy a little bit there there is the buddha also so you can see the buddha you can see the enemy so you can see like two things right uh, when you look up there is the buddha kind compassion uh um, gi giving love and kindness and all that 
Then in front of you, you see your enemy who is making you triggered, making you uh, annoyed, and making you uh, feel happy and all sort of things. So you have these two sort of uh, emotions, uh, uh, sort of uh, having tension in your your mind. Yeah. Now, if you uh, uh, yeah, when you look at the Buddha, all the blessings and the compassion. When you look at enemy hatred and all the annoying, uh, yeah, negative emotions start up. Now you look at your enemy. Uh, so um, you look at your enemy and uh, look at uh, how he. So let's let's call it a he. So so that how he makes you annoy. Uh, uh, how he makes you annoy like that. How how come he is annoying so much? What okay? So you are so much annoyed by his actions or his speech. So what are you uh, bothered by? His action? You bothered by his action? Are you bothered by his speech? Are you bothered by his intention? So you check, you analyze yourself. Why am I so bothered by this person? So when you look at um, uh, when you look at your uh, when you look at your enemy, um, then you check. Uh, what what makes uh, what annoys me? What is the triggering point? Right, his speech, my uh, speech, uh, action, or his mind, the intention. Um, so you uh, okay? So he said something very negative. Or he always says something very negative. He always does this. Uh, he always says something negative to me. He always does a lot of uh, bad and negative things to me. That's why I'm so triggered by him. So um, then. Yeah, if it is the uh, action, uh, the action uh, or the speech, so it's either the action or the speech, right? Uh, so the action or the speech comes from the mind. So even sometimes the action seems nice. Someone someone is smiling at you and doing good things to you, but you suspect that person has bad intention and so on and so forth. So basically, yeah. it all comes down to the mind. Uh, so yeah. the person, the action, the negative action or the negative speech is not the exact thing that is triggering you. Um, that's just the expression of that intention. The, so it is actually the intention, the mind, that is your real enemy. <clears throat> so it's the it's, it's the mm -hmm. intention, right? Not the action and the speech. Because the speech and action comes from the mind. So it's actually, if you check, uh, um, that, that is the mind, the intention uh, that is bothering you. Now, if you check it is the intention, then the intention is the part of the, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a part of the mind. Uh, so basically, you are hitting, you are hitting, or you are you are triggered by uh, the person that you call enemy is not the not the body, not this uh, physical body, the physical action, not the speech, but the uh, the mind, uh, the mind that is, that that is your real enemy, the mind of that person, which is your real enemy. So that person uh, is no longer the uh, you know uh, the, the physical body, uh, but the mind, right? Now we are. The mind of that person is our real enemy, our our real enemy, the one we have to destroy or get rid of. Then, if you look at uh, look at it that way, um, is the mind of that person is it really the enemy, right? Um, so, the the mind of that person, all that person thinks in his mind is just about just about uh, uh, um, harming us, or he has many other thoughts. Basically. His mind, your enemy's mind, is one hundred percent about destroying you, or he has many other thoughts like loving his daughter, caring for his family, uh, you know, serving his uh, community, etc. So, does he have many other intentions in his mind? Right? Does he have many other intentions, or is he just his mind is all about one hundred percent about getting rid of you, your enemy? So that now we know that uh, the, 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 the person, our enemy, uh, his whole mind, 100% of his mind, part of his mind is not about destroying you or harming you, right? He has many other thoughts, giving, taking care of his family, uh, taking, uh, doing a lot of other things. So his mind is maybe 5% or 10% or, you know, if at the most, maybe 10%, he thinks about uh, harming you. And the rest of his mind is about doing other things. No. So that means uh, it's not all of his mind. So when, when we say the enemy, the whole of the enemy, the, his his body, his speech, his mind as a whole is not your enemy. So your enemy is a part of uh, the mind of that person. And that mind is also a very, very, very small part, part of that person's mind. Uh, not even 10% actually. Uh, because... Uh, 
if you imagine, if you if if you imagine like how many times, how many times a day a person thinks thoughts, how many seconds a day, right? When you are awake, for the uh, you may sleep for six seven hours, and the rest of the day for fourteen fifteen hours, you always keep dreaming. You all uh, so you always keep thinking about something. So all these thoughts are not about destroying you. So your enemy uh, maybe uh, you know has a at at times and again that your enemy is trying to destroy you or think is bad about you. But most of the time he's thinking other thoughts. So that means his mind or his thoughts are not completely about destroying you or your uh, you know your he, the, the mind of your enemy does not make. Uh, as your enemy yeah <clears throat> so the so-called enemy uh the the, the mind the, the mental aspect of your enemy which is trying to destroy you right that aspect is very small uh, uh if you compare that to um uh, uh, all of his mind uh, compared to every thought that he has in a day he has in his life part about uh the the, the part of mind to destroy you or to get rid of you they're trying to uh, harm you is minimal, uh, and uh, if you if, if you if you analyze what that part of the, uh, what uh, what part of thought that is, then you, you will find out that it is none other than uh, hatred or uh, aggression, right? So it's the hatred or the aggression part of the anger part of the enemy, which is uh, trying to destroy you, which is the real enemy. So your enemy is not your enemy. Actually, your enemy is not your enemy. Your enemy's body and uh, speech is not your enemy. It seems like your enemy's mind is your enemy because the mind is the one who sort of uh, plotted everything. But then you know, when you check carefully, you also find out that it's not your enemy's mind also because uh, within mind, there are many parts, many aspects. And it's only a tiny part of your enemy's mind called uh, anger which is actually uh, triggering you. So that anger part of your enemy's mind is very small, very minimal. Uh, and so therefore, uh, the so-called enemy that you are looking for, so the so-called enemy that you uh, hold uh, so aggressively and want to destroy or get rid of, that enemy, if you check carefully and carefully, it will start to disappear slowly and slowly. <clears throat> so now we, we find out that... Uh, the, the, the real culprit, uh, the real enemy is uh, <clears throat> the mind, the anger part of your enemy's mind. Now, uh, the anger is responsible. Then if we check again carefully where the anger comes from, uh, the anger has to have a source. It has to have a cause. Uh, does it come from the fact that I actually did something wrong and I am at wrong or I did something bad to that person, uh, to my enemy? Or it's just his uh, mi misconception, his uh, ignorance that created it. So if it is, uh, if the fault uh, for the, for your enemy to be angry at you, if the fault lies within you, if you are at fault, if you made a mistake and make him angry for some reason, uh, then uh, even though his action to harm you or say a bad thing about you is wrong, but it's his anger is somewhat okay, not totally, but somewhat justified because you are at wrong, right? That is one aspect. Or maybe uh, you are not at wrong, but the person has misconception through his ignorance or his uh, ignorance. He thinks that you had did this harm to him and that's why he's angry at you. In this case, the ignorance is the culprit, not uh, the anger even. The anger also comes from a cause, which is either your mistake or uh, the, uh, the ignorance. Right. So in this case, it's the ignorance. So therefore, it should be ignorance that ignorance should be the one that you should be hating. Yeah. So when you don't observe, when you don't analyze, uh, it seems like uh, your enemy is real, ultimately real, uh, solid, and it's all there trying to uh, uh, destroy you and everything seems so real. But then when you look for your enemy, so right now we put our enemy in front of us, right? We don't put our enemy at the back because the enemy might stab us, so we are scared. So we don't put him in the back. We don't put him on the right side or left side. We put him in the very front side and then we analyze the enemy remember so when we analyze the enemy the more and more we analyze that enemies uh, uh enemy starts to disappear more and more actually between the matryoshka doll and our enemies matryoshka dolls are more real because at the end you will get a tiny tiny doll there right tiny yeah. doll there but if you open up your enemies if you keep uh, the action is not the enemy 
the speech is not enemy, the mind also not enemy. So you go to anger and then you go to ignorance and you go deeper and deeper. Okay, let's say you find ignorance as the ultimate, ultimate, um, uh, the uh, the ultimate culprit, the ultimate enemy, ultimate criminal is the uh, um, the the uh, the ignorance, right? Then the ignorance is actually faulted, is a faulty thought, is not a valid thought. Uh, so therefore, your enemy, by its very nature, is faulty, it's flimsy, it's uh, not solid because it's based on false logic, right? Because it's ignorance. So this is okay now. We come to the, as I said, we come to ignorance is the ultimate enemy. So ignorance is the only thing we can hold on to. But ignorance, we cannot hold on to because ignorance is no, has no basis. It, uh, the base for ignorance is uh, flawed. It's uh, faulty. So, so therefore, you will find out that your enemy, the so-called enemy that you have uh, <laughs> pictured in your mind, when you uh, dissect it, when you uh, you know keep digging more and more and more, the enemy starts to disappear. Uh, you will not find uh, the so-called enemy. Uh, it's a label that you uh, put on uh, someone, but you cannot actually find the enemy, the real enemy. <clears throat> so, uh, so uh, it all comes down to the uh, the uh, the ignorance. Uh, then ignorance has no basis. Ignorance is like a cloud. So you are actually, when you, okay, in the, in the beginning, we think about our enemy, the person we hate, the person who disturbs us. It's a real person. It's strong. It's uh, aggressive. It's very negative, trying to harm you, trying to destroy you. All the negative, all the bad vibes, all the bad things are there. Then if you keep uh, uh, analyzing deeper and deeper and deeper, then you will, just like the, the Russian doll, uh, you know, you keep opening and opening, opening inside. There is nothing. It's empty. Uh, it all comes down to uh, ignorance. So ignorance means not knowing, unknowing. Um, so you, uh, no clue, no idea. Uh, so therefore, it's uh, empty. There is uh, nothing to hold on to. It's like a cloud. It seems to be, there seems to be like a shape or something like that. But then when you try to catch it, it just disappears. There's nothing there. So that is how flimsy it is. That is how uh, uh, unreliable uh, your enemy is so there's nothing for you to hold on to so much and then you know uh, hold so tightly and then hate that person or to hold grudge or anything uh, in such ways <clears throat> so there's one line uh, from the uh, bodhisattva's way of life by acharya chandideva uh, uh, so which goes like this uh so usually uh, we hate the person or the, the enemy so we say oh this is the enemy and we try to we hate them, right? So, okay, so the, his, the line is like that. We hate the enemy because he harms us. But if you look carefully, it's not the enemy himself that hurts us. It's actually uh, the uh, the weapon which is harming us, right? The stick or the knife in his hand that is harming us. So if you really want to hate the thing that is harming us, it's not the enemy himself, but the knife, because the knife is the one that is cutting us or uh, uh, doing harm to us. So therefore, whatever is harming us, maybe his speech or maybe his action, we should be hitting that thing. We should be hitting the uh, the knife we should, or the stick, uh, <clears throat> but not the person. If you say uh, the no, the stick, I cannot hit the stick because the stick did not move by itself. The sti stick was moved by the person. Then the person is also moved by his thought, which is also moved by his uh, anger, which is actually moved by his ignorance. So therefore, uh, you actually, if you want to hate some someone uh, as your enemy, if you want to keep someone as your enemy, it should not be the stick, it should not be the uh, knife, it should not be the hand, it should not be the person, but it should be the very ignorance of the person who is led him into this action. So by getting rid of the uh, the ignorance uh, uh, ignorance of that person, so you have due to your ignorance, due due to the fact that you didn't understand that the uh, enemy actually was uh, that person's ignorance because of your own ignorance you didn't understand the real situation so therefore you have created the enemy it's not like the enemy is out there it's the enemy from in uh, from from your perspective <clears throat> so therefore that's what uh shanti deva said when he said if you want to cover uh the whole earth uh with leather with height uh to 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 protect your feet it's impossible you cannot have that much height you did that much leather but uh, if you really want to protect your uh, feet you just cover your tiny feet 
uh, with leather, and then you can walk any part of the earth, and you can uh, uh, your 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 feet will be protected from um, uh, um, the thorns and stones and stuff like that. Uh, so if you, uh, you if you protect yourself, if you protect your mind, if you uh, change your perspective, then the enemy will. Uh, go on self-destruction. Uh, the enemy will go away on its own. But if you do not uh, change your attitude or if you do not change your perspective, as we just did, it, as we just analyzed, if you do not do it this way, then the enemy, uh, this enemy will be go gone. Enemy number one will be gone. Number two will come. Number two will be gone. Three will come. Four will come. Five will come. It will be uh, uh, infinite number of enemies will be there as long as you live. So therefore, you have to change from yourself. Uh, rather than changing the world, you have to change yourself. So so this is one aspect so we have to do more so many thinking right remember basically so this is practice okay so practice uh okay there are many ways to practice practice you can practice by chanting uh chanting like uh the long long scriptures or you can practice by chanting mantras just one mantra oh, money, 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 again and again and again and again this is also a practice then also you can practice by analyzing using your mind meditate uh, uh practicing through uh, analyzing what is the cause, what is this, what is that, what is that, keep inquiring and thus uh, doing your practice. So practice uh, does not uh, restrict to just reciting or doing prostration alone. So there's physical practice, there's uh, verbal practice, and then most importantly, there's mental practice. So at the end of the day, we do not want to become uh, fit and strong uh, physically. The, 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 the purpose of doing our Dharma practices is not to become like a bodybuilder or to become a, like a, our voice to have like a singer, not like that. What we're trying to do is we are trying to develop our mind, remember? So therefore, at the end of the day, our practice should be focused on all these are very beautiful practices, mental practice, uh, physical practice and verbal practice, very beautiful. But at the end of the day, the purpose is to develop our mind to the fullest. To become a Buddha means to be awakened. So awaken means awakened with your, your mind, not with your body or your speech. Uh, so therefore, in order to awaken your mind, in order to develop your mind to the fullest, you have to think a lot. So this thinking practice is the I'm not going to say this is the real practice because that will uh, imply that others are not real. But what I'm saying is this is, uh, you know, uh, the main or very, 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 very important part of the practice because the verbal and the physical are secondary uh, and uh, to the mental development. So because of that, you have to think a lot. You have to analyze a lot. Um, your, 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 your mind develop, your, your wisdom will increase. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, this uh, part of what I just spoken, um, mm. you actually have to do it, practice on your own, think again and again and again and over and over a lot about your enemy. Uh, <clears throat> so if you have any questions, uh, then uh, please uh, prepare them and send here, uh, because after this, I will uh, take the questions. Yeah. <clears throat> so now you have uh, your practice uh, like this with a lot of thinking, right? So as I said, this is a practice, uh, you know, it's a real training. Uh, so you sit in front of the Buddha, in, uh, you are sitting in front of the Buddha, but between you and uh, your uh, you and the Buddha, there is your enemy, uh, you're imagining your enemy, your, your worst enemy, the person you hate the most, right? So you did all this practice uh, for five minutes, 10 minutes, uh, half an hour, how long, up to you, right? Uh, <clears throat> so you did the practice. So at the end of the practice, you finish the practice, then you imagine uh, that the Buddha, which is in front of you sitting up there, um, uh, looks at you, is very pleased, very happy that you are actually trying to practice, you are trying to convert your enemy into your friend. You are trying to convert your enemy. So the Buddha is very, very much uh, uh, happy. So you're not trying to kill or get rid of your no, you're not. You you are trying to. You are getting rid of your enemy not by killing him or destroying him, but by converting him, but uh, uh, by by transforming him, right? So therefore, the this this very action, the Buddhas are very pleased, and uh, so the Buddha very pleased as a sign of Buddha's uh, pleasure, the sign of Buddha's Buddha's uh, happiness. They uh, they glow, they shine brightly, right? They shine brightly, but. Uh, it's, it's a very bright shining, but it's not like the sun rays, which is very hot like that. It's a cooling rays, okay? Cool, cool, cooling like a moon. Of course, we, we know that moon doesn't like shine itself. It reflects the sun's light or all that. But just like a moon's light, uh, it is a very cooling effect. So this cooling effect, the light from the Buddha, 
actually touches your enemy. So before your enemy is very angry, very aggressive, very bad, all this thing. Now with the Buddha's blessing on his head, right? Slowly and slowly he calms down. Before your enemy hates you, wants to destroy you. And then now with the Buddha's blessing, with the powerful uh, calm, cooling light, it, your enemy is now so uh, calm down. He has changes his mind and attitude towards you, and he become more and more calm. Uh, he basically at the end of this practice, he is neutralized or he's uh, he, he's pacified. His anger is pacified, and he's no longer. Yeah. Your enemy. Thank you. So I will conclude the teaching here for today. And um, so I think there are two questions uh, I can see. So I think uh, the first question is about, uh, is it possible to receive the eight precepts by facing a Buddha's image or a statue? Uh, yeah. So taking the precept uh, from, not from an, uh, it, uh, from an actual person, but like from a, a statue or a Buddha, is it okay or not, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that question. Yeah. So if you yeah. are a first timer, if you are doing it for the first time, uh, then it, um, it's uh, not okay. Uh, you need to have an actual uh, preceptor, someone to uh, do ordain or not ordain, but like give you this. Uh, the, the 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 eight precepts has to be um, has to be uh, um, uh, under undertaken under someone who has already taken it. Okay, if the first time if you're doing it, but if you take it one time already. Then uh, let's say if you break one of the rules, uh, if you want to redo it or etc. Cetera, etc., cetera, then you can actually take it from a statue, uh, from uh, you know from uh, from the altar. You can do that. Yes. So um, the second question. Uh, so my translator is not that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm using Google Translate. So it. Uh, so is it about visualization of the Buddha and uh, uh, the, the 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 order of the Buddha and. Uh, your enemy, your friends, your relatives, and uh, your the stranger. Is it about the distance and the order of uh, all these things? Uh, how to visualize? Is that the question, Mr. Hong? Uh, I'm sorry, Rimuchi. I didn't see the Vietnamese. The question? Uh, the... Uh, it's, in the, it's in the chat. Actually, it's in the chat. Uh, it's from Chang. Uh, Chang. Chang. Uh... Uh, is that, is that, he's a call, he asking whether he please uh, remind how to visualize the yeah. first uh, about the Buddha and the order between the Buddha and the enemy and to myself mm -hmm. as well as the, 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 mm -hmm. the position of the, 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 the friend and the, the stranger. Please uh, okay. re, re, remind this. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, as I said, okay, so what we are doing is uh, in an ideal setting, in an ideal setting, uh, we have, uh, we visualize, we, we try to uh, sit in a, in, in, in your meditation room. Okay, so first thing first, uh, it's not necessary that you have, you have to have an altar room, like you need to have a meditation room separate or like that. If you cannot afford it, if you don't have, if you just have one room to live, that's also okay. You, whatever you are sitting, even in a bus or a car, you can also meditate, okay, just to tell you that. But if you can, uh, if you can afford it, uh, you have one meditation room or an altar room separate and your uh, like, you know, living room separate, that's also uh, good. Uh, because whenever you go to the meditation room, you feel like your energy feels like oh, you want to meditate or you feel like you want to do some spiritual uh, thing, right? So that is that is very helpful. Uh, if you don't have, that's not a big deal. Uh, now, that being said, uh, what we do is we uh, visualize in front of us an uh, image of a Buddha. Uh, we can have many, 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 many Buddhas, uh, but we just start with Shakyamuni Buddha because it, it's easier to easier to uh, meditate. So uh, meditate uh, Shakyamuni Buddha in front of us as I said, uh, like about one 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 meter or more uh, in a, like a length from where I am sitting to the Buddha, where the Buddha was sitting, and the Buddha is actually on the level. Uh, the height of the Buddha is starts from um, your your forehead, so it's like this. You are here, and the Buddha is like that. It's not equally like this, but like that, right? <laughs> Uh, so in so to to the Buddha, uh, you visualize this is not a, just a stone Buddha or a, even a gold Buddha or, or a silver Buddha, diamond Buddha, not like that. It's a living Buddha. It's a living Buddha, breathing and teaching and living and beaming and you know glowing and all the Buddhas like uh, power are there, compassionate, uh, loving. All everything is there. 
So through this Buddha, you make the offerings, you make the prostration, you make the prayer, you make the chanting, you do whatever you do, right? After that, you can do it all visualize, visualize, visually. You don't If you don't have all these things with you, you don't have to. You can just visualize that because it's a mental training. Uh, so after that, you mm -hmm. place your enemy in front of you, okay? Your enemy. So you may have many enemies. Just pick one enemy, the person who dis disturbs you the most. Pick him or her in front of you. Uh, you, you, okay. For now, forget about the other, other, other beings. Your enemy, your friend, your family. Let's forget about them for now. Just put play. Just focus on your your enemy in front of you. Okay, that that is one aspect. Uh, if you want to, uh, if you if you want to extend your practice more, so maybe uh, you can put your. Uh, if you want to extend, your families are on your uh, right side. Your friends and family on your right side, and you, the strangers on your left side. So like that. But right now you are practicing on how to um, pacify aggression, how to pacify anger. That's why you have the enemy in front. Now, if you want to practice on how to uh, develop detachment, you know, the, uh, the the opposite of attachment. If you are practicing detachment, you actually put your loved ones in the front and then you practice detachment, etc. Or on so on and so on like that. Okay, yeah. so uh, yeah. yeah, so the next one actually thank uh, says gratitude to Rambuche and the translator. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, yeah. you're yeah. most welcome yeah. for that. And uh, after that, there's one question. It's about asking about what, what is equanimity and yeah. uh, what are the levels of equanimity. Yeah, yeah, uh, equanimity and what are the levels of equanimity and how to practice equanimity at each level uh, so yeah. uh, he or she expresses gratitude to Rupuche and the translator yeah yeah exactly yeah mm. uh, yeah so uh, she's asking about the uh, what is equanimity and what level of equanimity there is so <clears throat> uh, so first uh, so there are two uh, I mean uh, when we say equanimity, okay, the, so so the, the English in in English when we say equanimity, it's I think it's uh, the, does not do much justice. I think, but in in when when we use the word in Tibetan, we use the word pangyum. So basically, it has like two sort of uh, sort of uh, meaning. Uh, first thing is uh, that to we to 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 see uh, everybody, uh, everybody is ev all of us, everyone. Uh, uh, equanimity is to see everyone as. Uh, equal or same, sameness, not equal, sorry. Equal, yeah. First, equanimity is to see everyone, see the sameness uh, with everyone, that uh, that we all seek yeah. happiness and we all want to do away with unhappiness. So basically, we are all seeking happiness, yeah, no matter what. If you are rich, you are seeking happiness. You are poor, you are seeking happiness. Uh, if you are... Uh, uh, um, if you are a white person or a, a, a you know black person, whoever you are seeking happiness, you don't want unhappiness. So uh, wanting happiness is not wanting unhappiness. Same for all sentient beings, not just human beings, not just animals. Everybody same. Uh, so because of that sameness, it is called uh, you know equanimity. Okay. So to see everyone as same, that is one part of uh, equanimity. So one way of looking at yeah, one way of understanding equanimity is that we are all same, same in the sense that. We all want happiness, not one unhappiness. That's one one way of equanimity. Another one of, uh, uh, but this is that is not the equanimity. Okay, uh, we talk about this kind of equanimity in the Dharma, but this is not what we are referring to when we talk talk about the four uh, immeasurables. Uh, equanimity in the four measured immeasurables. So when we say four uh, immeasurables, the the last one, which is the immeasurable equanimity, we're not talking about oh all human all human beings are same in uh, wanting happiness and not wanting unhappiness. All all human beings are same in like this. This is not the type of uh, uh, this is not what we are saying when we say equanimity. Yeah, when we say equanimity, uh, when we say uh, the in in. Uh, um, infinite equanimity, right? <clears throat> uh, infinite equanimity. Uh, in in, in uh, when we talk about the four equal, four uh, inf uh, uh, infinite uh, four infinite uh, qualities. Uh, um, what we are referring to is uh, that uh, there is no. Um, so in the Tibetan word we say no closeness or no distance. Close means nearby, and distance means uh, far away. So. Um, okay, my enemies, I really want to distance from them. So very, very far away, right? 
my friends, I want to get them close, 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 but I never want to separate from them. Uh, so basically, there's attachment. Uh, I want to, uh, enemies, I want to be far, far, far away. Basically, I want to get rid of them, destroy them. So that's basically hatred. And my, uh, the strangers, you know, people who are not enemies or uh, friends, I don't care about them at all. They're, they're very, very, they're not, of, they're not even far. They're far, farther than far. So like in the, in the, in the, in the very far distance. So basically some people, uh, I care and I not just care, but I care too much. Some people I uh, not only want to get rid of, but I want to get rid of completely. If we can obliterate that person from the universe face of the earth, we will try to do that. So basically there is a distance and a closeness. Uh, some people we were so close, we want to just grab, grab them and don't want to separate them at all times. Some people we want to be separated from them and never be with them at any one second even. Uh, so basically there is a closeness and there is a uh, 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 distance, close and distance, uh, near and far. So enemies are far. Enemies, we want to be far. Uh, friends, we want to be near. So that difference. Uh, so equanimity means uh, freedom from economy. Infinite equanimity means there is no such thing like, oh, these are my friends, so I will never want to separate from them and too much, basically attachment. Uh, enemies and want to destroy them and be far away from them, which is uh, uh, hatred or anger. Uh, uh, so th th there is also, uh, you know, get rid of that as well. So basically there is an equal balance. There is a balance between too much close or too much far. Uh, that is called equanimity. That is what uh, we mean by getting to equanimity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The years are long, goodbye, Mr. Hong, can you lead uh, in uh, Vietnamese, please? Dedication. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very much